Michael Butt has been a frontline paramedic since 1982. Over the last four decades, he's watched the job evolve. Uh, when I first started, we used to have a saying, you know, uh, uh, bed, blanket, oxygen's vitals, let's go. Um, within probably the first 10 years of my career, uh, that's when they developed um, a plan to give us, uh, uh, I think it was five uh, symptom relief drugs. A decade later, semi-automatic defibrillation was added. Every new addition came with months of training away from home. He says it kept his career interesting, and over the years, he's never grown tired of helping patients. You know, everything from drug overdoses to childbirth. Um, you know, I remember doing a home birth, and uh, the lady was like, yeah, I think I have the flu. I went to my doctor this morning, you know, um, I'm not just, you know, I'm just not feeling well. And my partner and I looked at each other and my partner said, who was Kevin at the time, Kevin Rushton, uh, said, we're gonna cure, we're gonna cure your uh, flu, ma'am. And she said, how are you gonna do that? Oh, we're gonna, you're gonna give birth to your baby right here now. And she was like, no, no, stop. No, I can't do that, I can't. So, you know, uh, moments like that, with even more training, he's now working as a community paramedic, doing on-site checkups with seniors in their residences. Stephen Marlett has worked with Mike for 34 years. Intelligent, one of the first advanced care paramedics trained when the program started in the 90s in Peel and Halton when we were combined. Uh, a leader. He remembers responding to a call at a large fire at a nursing home in the 90s. It was... Um, organized chaos, but as we arrived, we saw Mike and his partner at the time and felt reassured they had the experience. I was newer to the field and it was good to have uh, Mike and his partner there to help lead at the time. Michael's leadership also helped shape paramedicine in 1999. The province was downloading responsibility to the municipalities and he fought for the region to take it in-house rather than let ambulance services become private for-profit enterprise. Going to different council meetings, uh, especially when the private enterprise would show up, uh, we would be the thorn in their side, so to speak. Really uh, one of the highlights of my career. And to have somebody with Mike's experience um, leading in a team in the role that he's in, um, I'm, I'm humbled actually to be, to be his manager. While she's now deputy chief, Sarah Frankham first started out as Mike's partner. I sort of marveled at the way that he worked and his knowledge and, and the way he was with patients. He was always so kind and patient and there was never, you know, a point of frustration that would come out because there's always frustrations on the job but it would never come across that way and he taught me so many things his, his professionalism and his compassion and his, his empathy towards his patients is is unrivaled um, the way he has served his community for that many years and continues to uh, 40 years as a frontline paramedic is not an easy feat and not many people achieve that so Mike to have, have gotten that far and still be a frontline paramedic um, helping now the most vulnerable members of our community is just something to be, I, I hope I can aspire to it one day. When, when I look at um, all the people out there and there's only a handful of us that have made it to 40 years in this business, I, I feel proud of that accomplishment and still continue to help. I'm not done yet, you know, I have a couple more years left in me I think. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting for Halton News, I'm Nikki Wesley.